All the evidence we have says that the universe had a beginning. And even though you'll read in the newspaper from time to time about alternative models of the universe that have been proposed, a theorem that Dr. Vilenkin and two other cosmologists developed tells us that any universe that is expanding on average throughout its history, like our universe, must have had a beginning. In fact, the theorem tells us that even if our universe is just a tiny part of a much larger multiverse, that theorem tells us the multiverse itself would have had a beginning. And that leads us to an argument for the existence of God uh, called the Kalam Cosmological Argument, popularized by my good friend, Dr. William Lane Craig. And it's a very simple argument for the existence of God. It has three parts. First part is this. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. Now stop there for a second. Can you think of anything that has a beginning that didn't have a cause behind it? No. In fact, one of the greatest skeptics who ever lived, David Hume, said, quote, I never asserted so absurd a proposition as that anything might arise without a cause. So first, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Second, the universe began to exist. Virtually every scientist today concedes that. And that leads to the natural conclusion. If whatever begins to exist has a cause, we know the universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe must have a cause behind it. Now, what kind of a cause can bring a universe into existence? Well, it must be, it must be transcendent because he exists apart from creation. He must be immaterial or spirit because he existed before the physical world existed. He must be timeless or eternal because he existed before physical time came into being. He must be powerful given the um, immense energy of the creation event. He must be incredibly smart given the precision of the creation event. He must be personal because he had to make the decision to create. He must be caring or loving because he so carefully crafted a habitat for all of us to flourish in. And then finally, the scientific principle of Occam's razor tells us there would be just one creator. So what do we got? Transcendent, spirit, eternal, powerful, smart, personal, caring, unique. That's a pretty good description of the God of the Bible. 